Hello! Welcome to another installment of this PFAS video series. Today we're going to talk about PFAS nomenclature. So first, PFAS, per and polyfluoral alkyl substances. So this means any compound that has at least a carbon that is fully fluorinated. Um, it usually refers to carbon chains, there can be some carbon rings out there, it can be a lot of different structures. First of all, the pronunciation of PFAS, P F A S P F A S as in P F A S T, not P F O S because that there are some other compounds named P F O S that would be confusing. There are P F A S that's not correct either. No P F O S. It's it's a weird acronym because you don't actually pronounce out the whole acronym. It's P F A S. There are a lot of different acronyms here. It's kind of acronym soup, acronym word puzzles. You can look at it. Um, there's a lot of them. Hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to recognize most of these and at least um, make a good effort at figuring out what they all mean. I really recommend for reading perfluoroalkyl and perfluoroalkyl substances, perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances in the environment. Terminology, classification, and origins. This is a paper by Buck and a bunch of others. Um, Bob Buck worked for DuPont and it gives an excellent summary of all the different classes that were around at the time. There's been some new classes since then um, and then gives good condition conventions for naming that can be applied to new classes that haven't been discovered yet. It's a, it's a fantastic resource and it's a good one to know. PFAS, thousands of known chemicals, endless possibilities of unknown to science yet chemicals. First we're going to go over a few different PFAS classes. Um, this is going to be things like PFCAs. So this is the first class we'll go over today. PFCAs, perfluoroalkyl carboxylic acids. First of all, we look at the naming here. When you see per, perfluoro, it means that all of the carbons have been fully substituted with fluorine instead of hydrogen. So if it was a, just an aliphatic, a normal aliphatic compound, it would have CH bonds. All those CH bonds have been replaced with CF bonds. That's what perfluoro means. Polyfluoro would mean some of the carbons might not be fully fluorinated. They might still have CH bonds. And we all know, hopefully, carboxylic acid, CO2H. Um, that, that's the acid group we talk about here. These are some of the reactive PFAS, as they were called initially in their development. And they look like this. So this is an eight carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with a carboxylic acid. So it's perfluorinated. We would call this PFOA perfluorooctanoic acid. Um, different chain lengths of the same structure. So if you had four carbons total, it would be called perfluorobutanoic acid, or five would be perfluoropentanoic acid. Um, you can see the naming is scale scalable to as many carbons as you want. Uh, these I covered first because like PFOA, it is one of the most common. PFOA was the compound C8 that they talk about in the Dark Waters movie. It's getting a lot of attention right now. Um, these are very common in the regular regulated methods like EPA 537.1 and 533. You'll see these everywhere. They're some of the most common PFAS. Second class of today, PFSAs, perfluoroalkyl sulfonic acids. So it's very similar to our previous compounds, except instead of a CO2 group on the end, we have an SO3 group. It's also an acidic functional group. Um, the structure is similar. You see we have now eight carbons, which on PFOA had seven fluorocarbons and one CO2. This actually has eight fluorocarbons. Um, so it's a, even though there's still eight carbons, it's a little, little bit different, a little bit longer of a structure. That is PFOS, P-F-O-S, perfluorooctane sulfonic acid. Also, one of the original dynamic duo, PFOS and PFOA, we've known about them forever. We've known about health effects. They were the ones 3M phased out in 2000. Um, PFOS is the most common, but again, there's other chain links. HPS might be heptane sulfonic acid. BS would be butane sulfonic acid. Now we'll get into a little more complicated structure here. So we have perfluoroalkyl sulfonamidoacetic acids or sulfonamidoacetic acids. Um, if we look at that name, we obviously have a sulfonamide or sulfonamide group and we have an acetic acid group. So we're adding on extra functional groups to the structure here to give it some extra characteristics, like maybe improved water solubility. 
So now we have eight fluorocarbons, so we have another octane. Um, we have an SO2N, a very cool structure called a sulfonamide or sulfonamide. And then we have uh, acetic acid, so very, very common part of the structure. And then a little methyl group at the bottom there. So this one would be named methyl fosa, so N-methyl perfluorooctane sulfonamido acetic acid. Um, this is another one that's in method 537, and it's one that, even though it was in 537, has not been, um, not, not been detected a whole lot, uh, but it is in the method and it has been looked for a lot. Okay, FTSAs. This is a polyfluorinated compound, and it's poly because, as you'll see in the structure, we have some carbon-hydrogen bonds on that chain. So fluorotelomer sulfonic acid. Telomer here, um, it refers more to the process it was made rather than the actual structure. Telomer was a, a process called telomerization, where additional subunits um, were added onto a structure of two CF2s. Um, so this doesn't tell the structure, it tells more of how it was formed, so that's a little bit confusing. When you look at them, um, they're very easy to recognize there. Um, have six fluorocarbons and then two hydrocarbons and then the SO3, so that's your sulfonic acid. Um, we have different types of FTSAs, so we have 426282 that refers to the length of the fluorocarbon part of the chain to the length of the hydrocarbon part of the chain. So 6,2 was our previous example. 6,2 would have six fluorocarbons and two hydrocarbons. 8,2 um, would have eight fluorocarbons and two hydrocarbons. Um, so that's FTSAs. These were not in method 537, but they are in method 533. So that was a quick overview of nomenclature for some common PFAS. There's a lot more to learn. Again, I recommend that Bob Buck paper. Go out and read it. Learn about it for yourself. It's a very good thing to know. Again, thousands of chemicals, endless possibilities. Uh, you can continue to synthesize as many different structures as these, and that I'm sure the companies are doing it to find different commercial and industrial uses. Thank you, and hope you join for another video.